Great. So as mentioned, I've been working on looking at the economic return on investments in young children for a number of years. Uh, we recognize that there can be a very high return on investing and supporting children's development and their school readiness. Um, today, we're looking more at the two generation approach in terms of how high quality childcare can affect parental employment. And uh, Bina, I think, set the groundwork very well here for this discussion, the data you provided. Um, I'm gonna just add a couple other points of data on this. And before the pandemic, there was a number of states that had measured the economic impact of a lack of childcare supply and reliability on parents, businesses, and taxpayers. And they found a substantial impact. I know that they're uh, within the 12th district, there's at least some studies for Washington and Idaho. And the Minneapolis Fed, we're just uh, about ready to release um, our reporting on a survey that we part partnered with, with the University of Montana and the Bureau of Business and Economic Research there. And based on a pre-pandemic survey of households, we found that um, households, parents, they lost $145 million uh, due to missing work, switching from full-time work to part-time work, or turning down a job offer because of inadequate childcare. Uh, businesses lost $55 million in 2019 due to lower employee productivity and higher turnover rates and taxpayers lost $32 million. And this is a you know, relatively smaller state compared to many in the 12th district. So indeed, childcare serves as an important component of workforce infrastructure. Uh, two thirds of all children under age six uh, have all of their parents in the labor force. And this sector represents 675,000 small businesses in the country and more than 1.5 million workers and self-employed family childcare home operators. But ch childcare is a challenging business model. Uh, many of these small businesses operate on thin margins uh, the vast majority of revenue in the market comes from parents' tuition payments. And parents with young children are typically in their early earning years of their careers. And many bring home less income than they will in their later years while facing costs associated with family formation, such as renting or buying a large living space. This means many childcare providers have little room to raise their rates. On the cost side of a childcare provider's ledger, it's driven by hired labor. And this is the, of course, the essential component of providing childcare. And as being pointed out, wages in the childcare sector are already low. So with providers unable to lower wages further or to reduce staff levels, there are few opportunities um, for finding efficiencies or cutting costs in the sector. Furthermore, childcare providers usually come to the profession with a background in child development not necessarily business. And business technical assistance can be an important strategy for helping providers build capacity to operate sustainable businesses. You know, developing cross-sector partnerships, as Naomi mentioned earlier, at the local and the state level, between childcare providers, the local business sector, and government uh, entities, they can help overcome a number of these market barriers. So here's my disclaimer slide. So moving now to the discussion about the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on childcare. So back in the spring, there was increased unemployment working at home. This led to a sharp drop in demand for childcare. Uh, the Bipartisan Policy Center had a survey in early April and it showed that 61% of parents reported their childcare provider closed. Operators have been operating at reduced capacity according to a June survey of the national, from the National Association for the Education of Young Children, 86% of childcare providers reported serving fewer children with an average of 60% decrease in enrollment. Furthermore, several states closed childcare programs except for those serving essential workers. In this Child Care Aware of America map from May, states in blue kept childcare open, other states closed childcare with exceptions for those providing for care for essential workers. A key role for childcare during the first few months of the pandemic was providing care for essential workers, including healthcare, emergency, and other jobs classified as critical infrastructure. Policymakers recognized that without childcare, essential workers with young children couldn't get to their jobs. 
The Atlanta Fed estimates that there's 2.6 million of the nation's healthcare workers and first responders who are parents to children under 14 years old that need childcare. A recent survey of parents by the US Chamber of Commerce Foundation shows that there's a lot of volatility in childcare arrangements, which makes it challenging for both parents and providers to predict the future. In this survey, uh, almost half of working parents are now working remotely. 75% of working parents currently have children staying at home. 65% of parents have changed their childcare arrangements and 60% of parents expect to change their childcare arrangements within the next year. A survey of employers by the US Chamber of Commerce Foundation uh, found that employers do recognize that childcare is an important part of workforce infrastructure to help parents to return to the workforce during the economic recovery. 79% uh, of employers have shifted a significant part of the workforce to remote. 40% uh, of employers have offered additional childcare accommodations, primarily flexible schedules. And 40% of employers are concerned that some employees will not fully return. The pandemic created a number of financial challenges for childcare providers as they needed to modify practices in order to address COVID safety and health related concerns. For example, child drop off and pickup practices may be more labor intensive and staff may be required now to perform daily health checks on children. Other costs include hiring substitute teachers or closing classrooms for two weeks following COVID exposure which can be very disruptive uh, to provider operations. Some providers are making alterations to their facilities to accommodate social distancing, and providers also need access to basic cleaning supplies and personal protective equipment. The largest financial impact comes from a 10-person group limit on ratios. Many, but not all, uh, state health department apply the general CDC guidance for a 10-person group, lim group limit to child care center classrooms and home-based family child care providers. The child staff ratio refers to the number of children to staff in a classroom. Group size is the maximum number of children in a classroom. This is examples from Minnesota, but applies you know, broadly to other states as well, although the, the details will be slightly different. So here you can see the impact on the 10-person limit on ratios for preschool and classroom age class or classroom or school age classrooms and group size for all classrooms except for infant classrooms. For toddler classrooms, um, the size was essentially cut in half, uh, preschool classrooms by more than a half and school age classrooms by more than a third. So while there's some variable costs that go down uh, since there's fewer children such as laying off assistants um, or some teachers, but revenue falls more than costs as lower revenue is spread across uh, fixed costs. So toddler classrooms, we see that the monthly cost increase is about $2,000 per classroom. Preschool classrooms, the monthly cost increased by 2,500. Many small home-based provider, uh, family child care uh, providers are not affected by the smaller group size, except for those serving more than eight or nine children. There has been support for the sector. For example, in the spring, the CARES Act provided 3.5 billion, which is distributed through existing state block grants. Uh, some states allocated general revenue to the sector or helped child care providers acquire sanitization supplies and PPE. More is needed. Uh, the Senate Majority's Relief Bill includes uh, 15 billion for child care, and some House plans propose as much as 50 billion. And it's yet to be seen how th those plans will move forward. There are concerns that these small businesses may not be able to weather the pandemic without more government assistance. And if providers that can't cover their costs end up shutting down permanently, they may not be easily replaced by new market entrants. You know, childcare businesses and especially childcare centers can face steep costs to enter or re-enter the market. For example, providers must often make significant capital investments in a commercial or residential property to convert it to an appropriate space. Uh, child care providers often struggle to find credit for such investments during normal times. Uh, during the pandemic, credit may be even more difficult to access due to uncertainty about market conditions. So I'm going to turn it back to Naomi. Thank you, Dr. Hoffman.